before we write anything, I just want to explain like why are we why are we doing this tutorial? Okay? And my answer to that is well, let's just have a look around us. Okay? Um, think about things in nature. Things like this, things like whoops, like this. I don't know, has anyone ever seen a starfish in real life before? Yes. Yeah, excellent, yeah, a whole I'm bunch really of you. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah can, you, can, you can do it for me, Aiden. Um, you, know, you, can, you, can, you can reach that. There you go. Okay, have a look at this. I have, um, I have one of these near my house. Actually, I have quite a few near my house. Have a look at the angles coming off the trunk here, right? Do you want to go to the next one? Whoa, look at that. Uh, my mum, she used to grow these. Um, they're they're kind of like cacti, but they're not that pointy. Like, these are actually quite soft. And look at all of these angles swirling around. Look at each like individual, I don't know what you call these, petals maybe? They form an angle, and they're all forming these different angles going around. Aiden, next one. Oh, watch out. <laughs> Have a look at this one. What's this? <laughs> this is a beehive, right? This is, um, this is an incredible little grid here. And bees, you wouldn't think they know lots about maths, but well, they know a lot about angles, right? Now, it's not just nature that likes angles, if we just go to the next one, okay? Have a look at this interesting piece of architecture. Have a look at all of the angles flying around there, okay? Uh, the next one's a bit more local. Have a look at the angles on this. Angles in every little spot, nook and cranny. This thing's built of angles. Uh, and I think I have one more. Yeah, that's a fun one. Have a look at that. Uh, angles, angles everywhere, okay? Now, angles, that's my last picture. Angles are everywhere and angles are really interesting. That's why we're interested in angles. Okay? So, under this heading, right, I'd like you to um, get a ruler out. Would you get a ruler if you haven't got one? I'm going to... I'll leave this one. Oops. I'll leave that one there because I like that picture. Thank you very much. With your ruler... Oh, uh, that's a shame. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Go away. With your ruler, what I'd like you to draw for me is, well, I'd like you to draw an angle for me, but I'm going to show you the kind of angle I'd like you to draw, so we all have a similar one. If you're up for yourself, and if you could make it, uh, make this little angle um, actually about the size of the palm of your hand. Don't make it any smaller, because we're going to draw some stuff on this and later. Uh, if it's too small, uh, I hope you draw it in pencil, so you can... Oh, if your palm is... No, it's okay. Your palm's okay. Uh, yes, that's it. Okay, if you don't have a ruler, I think I may have one or two to lend, but you may have to borrow from a friend in the meantime. Catch. Okay. So, with your ruler there, we are going to label a few things on here because in mathematics, I've told you this before, Language is powerful, right? If you have language that you can use to describe something, you can explain to someone else, you can communicate things about it. So this is an angle, but we want to be able to talk about it and describe it. So the first thing I want to say is, well, this angle needs a name, right? Um, I'm going to call this angle, well, what shall I call it? Hmm. How about, <laughs> sorry, I'm just thinking about, I'm going to call this angle, because I like this name, I'm going to call this angle damp, okay? Now, you will find often, right, we have particular points on a diagram, you've seen this before, and we give them letters. So you can say, oh look, there's D, and there's N, and there's A. Okay. Now this particular angle starts here, goes to here, and then ends there. You need three points to make an angle, don't you? Okay. So we're going to say, this is, and rather than saying, angle, Dan, we have a, a symbol that we use. In fact, it looks a lot like this. This is our symbol for an angle, okay? You can see it kind of looks like an L that's just sort of really, really bent over, okay? This is Dan, okay? Now, Dan um, is the way that I would probably name this angle, but you can see that's not the only way you could call it. Yeah. You remember how I started up here, right? What's to say you don't start from down here and you'll still make the same angle, right? Um, so you can call him, if you really want, I think it's a bit strange, but you can call him Nad too if you want. He's the same angle, he's pretty flexible. Okay? Uh, now, I couldn't call it Bob because they don't have two Bs and then it's like, well, which B do you mean? B1 and B2. <laughs> <laughs> you could call B1 and B2. Uh, but then it would be B1 of 2, like that's the case. Okay. 
Now, I will add on something, and um, I want you to put it in a different color, actually maybe red, okay? Um, you can see the most important of these points are D, A, and N. The most important one is where the angle is happening, right? That's in here at A, right? A is like the critical piece. So some people, some people, just call him angle sine A, right? Now, I'm going to discourage you from writing it like that. I'll tell you why in a minute. But I want you to see it because if some people call them that, you want to know what they're talking about. You want to recognize what they mean, right? Uh, I'll give you an example shortly of why I don't think this is such a great idea for you. I think um, Dan and Nahad are better. But nonetheless, sometimes you'll see it, just one letter, and they mean that's the important one. Now, while I'm staying on red, if you've got another color there, let's describe some of these bits and pieces, right? Uh, these two things here, they kind of look like two arms stretching out, right? Two yeah. arms stretching out from someone over here. So because they kind of look like two arms, we call them arms. Very um, handy, right? This angle, every angle, has two arms. One on the top, one on the bottom, or one on the left, one on the right, whichever way. That's the most important, the, the part that forms it, okay? Like we said before, the most important point in the angle is that one, right? The one where the angle is actually happening. So because he's important, we give him a special name as well. It's called the vertex, okay? Um, the plural of vertex is a very fancy word that makes you sound super professional. The plural is vertices, okay? So you can have one vertex, there's one vertex, or if you're describing a whole bunch of angles, you will have a whole bunch of vertices. Okay? Uh, and we'll talk about like, different shapes of their vertices. We just mean the corners like that. So that's the vertex. I might even put it in blue. Okay? And the privileged vertices is one last piece to indicate that an angle is happening. Right? I'm going to put in a little arc here. Right? That arc, it indicates, all right, this is the size I'm interested in. And in fact, that size there, that's our definition for an angle. I really wanted to give you a picture first. 